Welcome to the second episode of Modern Marketing TV. Today we have Peter Janssens, uh, founder and CEO of Intracto, an agency that's becoming one of the biggest ones in Belgium and even uh, abroad. So uh, a very interesting episode and I want to see how Peter built Intracto to what it is today. Good morning, Peter. Hi, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. A little bit tired, but uh, it's part okay. of the deal. <laughs> what should people who are watching this show know about you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm 34 years old. Uh, I have a young child of seven months. That's why I'm a little bit tired, uh, short nights. Um, and, and by day, if in, by day, I, uh, I lead the agency Intracto. Okay. Can you tell us a bit more about Intracto and what you guys are doing? Yeah. Um, Intracto started as, as a web development company, uh, but through the years we expanded our offering and our services. And, and today I think we are a full blown, uh, truly digital, uh, agency. Um, who, who tries to grow uh, uh, on an organic and uh, strategic way in the Benelux. And I think growth is a bit of an understatement because in the hallway before our, in <laughs> before our conversation, uh, you also mentioned that um, yeah, you guys are on 360 people uh, in the meantime. Uh, amazing. Uh, I think that's uh, pretty uh, crazy in, uh, in the Benelux. Um, what's the secret behind the success? Can you, can you share some... Uh, some some tips or uh, uh, well uh, i don't think there is one big secret uh, for one one big magic recipe or so uh, i think we just love to work hard uh, we talk with a lot of companies uh, in our sector and and we try to identify which company has the talent on board that we will be needing in the future and today we're focusing on expanding by acquiring the right talent that our customers need today and tomorrow clear so you always buy uh, companies or, or you, uh, you you merge with companies based on the needs of your clients uh, yes yes um it, it's it's a combination eh? um I, I think most of our growth is also organic eh? uh, our customers like to grow and we grow with them uh, but besides that, indeed, we, we have a buy and build strategy, uh, as they call it. And, and that's focused on, on acquiring the right talent. Talent, talent, talent. That's the one thing we need. Uh, if we want to survive eh, in the next four years, uh, then we need the right talent. Yeah. That's the basic. So if, if I take a closer look at Intracto, uh, you call yourself a full service uh, digital agency. Uh, what does that full service stand for? Uh, if you look at uh, yeah, the modern or, or the digital agency of the future, which skills and which talent do you need in there? For our belief, uh, a, a good digital agency needs to combine some domains and expertise. Uh, first domain for us is technology, a second domain is marketing, a third is creation, creative services, and a fourth is strategy consultancy, advising companies uh, in their future. Um, we try to combine those four domains and what we see is when we combine those expertises um, we are able to deliver above expectations because we combine business thinking with technology, with marketing and we even add some creative uh, sauce up, uh, on it and that's... that's uh, what makes the difference? Clear. Um, can, can we zoom in a little bit on the marketing uh, part of uh, Intracto? What types of marketing services are you offering these days? Because I, I see you guys as one of the pioneers in uh, yeah, everything digital related. Uh, is it fo is it still focused on marketing automation only or no it, it, it goes further than that uh, when when we see uh, to our marketing services we try to identify the types of marketing that will be relevant in the, in the near future. Uh, voice marketing is one of them, for example. Uh, we are experimenting with that also. But when we see at our teams, we have a content team, uh, 30 people who write the, the, the right messages that our customers, customers want to hear. We've got a creative team uh, in our marketing team. We've got an advertising team, uh, SEO team. We've got an analytics and data team, reporting team, because numbers, it's all about the numbers when you talk marketing. Uh, we've got an inbound team, marketing automation team is pretty big uh, these days. So we try to combine different skills and different domains in marketing as well. Um, and that's uh, why we make the results. And you, me you mentioned that Intracto started as a, a web development agency. Um, uh, how did you take that first, uh, let's call them baby steps into, uh, into marketing and, and, and how, uh, where was the focus there? We started in 2005 uh, uh, as indeed a web development company. But our first baby steps into marketing was 
in 2007, I think. So we took pretty fast the step from purely a technical uh, execution company to also a marketing company. And, and we did that because we always believed that the services we need needed to add value for our customers. And just by building a website, it's its first step, it's a very, very important step, eh? building the technical platforms to communicate with the customers. But uh, if we want to differentiate ourselves from other agency t uh, agencies at, this m at that moment, we, we wanted to take the step that we could prove the added value we delivered uh, by yeah, generating traffic on the website, by generating conversions, the first leads and so on. And uh, we did that because we, we all, uh, all the team uh, members believe that we need uh, to prove our added value and, and we hired uh, a first lady in, in okay. that. Uh, because diversity, that, that diversity is very yeah, important. Uh, yeah. in, a, in a purely men's club at that moment, yeah. uh, the first lady was a marketing uh, lady. Um, and, and from that step, it, 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 it took it further. Yes. Okay, great. Um, in the in the um, w while uh, waiting for this conversation, I read like a, a very interesting very interesting interview with you. Uh, and in that interview, you mentioned um, that within ten years, fifty percent of the services uh, that Intracto offers today uh, will be different. Um, so my question there is, yeah, which new services do you think you you will go into offering? And as we uh, take a step back, huh? uh, ten years ago more than 50% of the services we provided then are different than the services we provide today. Yeah? The market is evolving. We as a company are evolving. The demands of our clients are evolving and we need to be sure that our focus is on evolving, uh, following the market. Sorry, not evolving, following the market. It's um, a nice one. It's uh, very, very important. And, and we say that in everything we do. We are a company today, but if we're exactly the same company within six months, we're doing something wrong. It can't be true that we're standing still. Uh, and that's on our own way of working, on our culture, on our services, on the market. It, it, it can't be right that you stand still for six months. That, that's we believe in a constantly, constantly evolving company. So also our services need to be evolved. I like the, the fact that you, that you mentioned that you follow the market, but uh, uh, earlier in this conversation, I mentioned that, yeah, for me, uh, I'm also in the same market, but Intracto is for many people uh, a pioneer that, that leads the market. So it's a bit uh, difficult <laughs> for me and odd yeah. to me that you say, yeah, we follow the market because, for example, you guys are already experimenting with a team on voice marketing. Yeah, how should we see that? Where do you take that inspiration and, and, and where does the idea come from? Maybe we have to take one step back and... and define what we mean uh, when we talk about the market. Huh? The market for us is not the, the digital agency market, uh, especially not in the Benelux. Um, we try to uh, monitor everything that goes on in the markets of our clients and try to identify what the needs are over there yeah, the and the evolution needs, there. Yeah. And, and that's why we choose to uh, invest in new services, new marketing services, new technologies sometimes. Um, and that's where the inspiration okay. comes from. Yeah, I think that that's very interesting because a lot of people uh, watching this show and yeah, especially me, I'm also a founder of a digital agency. Yeah, what services are you guys already looking into? You mentioned voice, but are there other things you can already share that you guys are... Um we are experimenting a lot uh, and I think it, it's uh, it, we, we need to experiment. Uh, we, we've got 360 uh, digital... Um, hungry people uh, looking for, for uh, uh, new new experimenting in technology. We we experiment in voice. Uh, this is very important for us. Uh, we experiment today in, in making holograms, uh, 3D modeling and so on. Th those are the, the nice ones uh, today. Uh, we try to experiment with uh, the, the, the typical chatbots, but we, we hate chatbots today. Uh, and then uh, AI and so on, those, those are the, the, the hypey words, I think. Just, yes, we're also uh, experimenting on, on that level. Um, but we are also uh, also experimenting on uh, a lower level. Eh? It, it's, it's nice to say you're, you're experimenting in AI and so on. It's, but we also try to experiment on a, on a lower level by 
just experimenting with new technologies, uh, new uh, HTML frameworks, new, new Drupal modules, and so on. Also, on that level, experimenting and constantly evolving is very, very important for us. Yeah. Because how, how do you guys structure these experiments? Because, for example, an, an old one of your experiments is very familiar to me. It's uh, one day, you probably already know which one I'm going to mention. Uh, it's the tool to uh, to create a, a list for Secret Santa. Uh, yes. uh, you guys build it <laughs> internally. It's used by thousands or maybe even hundreds thousands of people more which than, is more than a million huh? yeah that's <laughs> crazy uh how do you guys structure that do people get f uh, spare time uh, within their uh, hours or, or how should i see that uh approximately six to eight percent of the total time uh is, is uh, in in the organization is spent on own projects learning uh we've got a lot of budgets and 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 possibilities to learn on the job and learn inside projects and so on uh, Secret Center is just one of them, um, and we try to to stimulate that as well. Uh, um, and by stimulating that that people take time to to really investigate new things, experiment with Learn. new things, new projects, some sidekick projects. Uh, we've we've got a lot of si sidekick projects. Um, it's it's just fun also, uh, and it keeps some some dynamic in the organization. Because uh, looking at the structure, do you guys run some internal hackathons then, or or how where do where do the ideas come from? Yes. Um, uh, it it comes from all over the place. I think uh, the, the the best ideas are, are not uh, invented by the management. Let's be clear on that. Uh, we've got the worst ideas sometimes. A CEO uh, who gives yes, credits uh, to the people. Uh, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the people that built the company. So uh, I'm just talking here about the company, but uh, the the real the real power is in the company. Uh, um, but no, the, the, the every everything uh, we we do in organization, but not only experiments. Everything we do, everything, every small step we take as a company, is most of the times um, by the initiative of the people. We've got a, a small tool, for example, it's Vibe, vibe.interactor.com. It's an internal tool, and everything, ev every time you you see some opportunity or you see something is 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 broken in the company or you see some optimal optimization in the company, you just go to vibe.interactor.com, give the small idea of hey, this is wrong or this we have to do better or this is a, that's a nice idea, and uh, I would suggest we we fix it that way. We send it, uh, f the Vibe uh, comes to uh, a small team and, and the team goes uh, directly, uh, takes the action. And you made uh, that tool internally as well. Of course, uh, of course. Of course. Yes. And it's not open to the public. We've got a lot of tools and optimization uh, in the company. Yeah? It's, okay. uh, it's a, a very, very nice company, I think. Uh, the very, very people-driven company. Um, but uh, in, in the back office, there are a lot of data, a lot of tools, a lot of knowledge about everything we do in our behavior and so on. It's a combination. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's take one, one step back. Uh, I, I really like the fact that you build all these side projects and that people get time uh, within their, uh, yeah, within the hours they get paid by the company to work on stuff like that. Um, what advice would you give uh, fellow founders or entrepreneurs or, or people uh, within a company um, to get started with something like that? Because I think every, every company might need uh, things like that. I, we all know uh, the website grader from HubSpot, Gmail, uh, and there are a lot of examples of side projects uh, that are very successful and maybe even strengthen the core business afterwards. But wh what advice would you give uh, people to, to get started with that? Um, I, I think it, it, uh, it needs to be in the DNA of the company. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the most important things I think um, what we do is really listen to the ideas of our colleagues. For example, um, today we, we have a marketing team, but the first step uh, into content marketing, for example, didn't came from the management. The first step we did in uh, setting up a, a service and support team didn't come from the management team or so, but it came really from the colleagues and the colleagues dropped out the ID and it's as management and as a company that that needs to be focused on following that IDs and not your own ID. I think I'm, I'm the most, um, I'm not a smart man. <laughs> um, Humble. But <laughs> I, 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 uh, I think listening to every ID in the company and taking that ID and um, execute it, that's something we are good at. And, and uh, I think that's one of the reasons <coughs> we, we keep on growing. Okay. 
Nice. Um, yeah, talking uh, more ab about you. Um, I am always curious uh, as a as a fellow founder, and my company is like way smaller. <laughs> uh, but I think it's it's super interesting to to hear about the challenges you faced as a CEO and the, the things that shaped you. Uh, you told us uh, Interacto exists already 13 years. That's 13 a very years. long time in yeah. uh, in digital. Uh, <laughs> it's like dog years. You have to multiply yeah, it by yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's. Um, it's it's very uh, yeah it's very exciting to me like to hear more about the things that you struggled with and and what were your main learnings as a as a CEO. Yeah. I think I, I struggled with everything, just everything. Um, I, I struggled with the the, the, the first time uh, we hired a team member. Uh, I struggled the first time with a customer that didn't pay his bill. Um, I struggled with the first time we have to, uh, we had to install a new office and and uh, we had to yeah implement uh, new new ways of working. Uh, I struggled with the first acquisition we did. Uh, uh, we failed in, in also some things we do. Uh, uh, for example, in 2017 we opened an office in New York. Um, it just failed. It's not the market we need to be uh, in. Um, so I think we. We, try, we love to do a lot of things. Uh, sometimes things fail, and that's not a bad thing. I think we have to take the learnings and, and just keep setting new baby steps into yeah. everything we do. And um, we fall sometimes, I fall sometimes, uh, I run against the wall, but the focus we have is don't quit, don't quit, don't stop, just yeah. keep on going. Because I, I I like your answer, um, but of course now there is like yeah you manage you mentioned the management team and there is like 360 hungry people uh, behind or around you. Um, but if you think back to the early days, because a lot of people who watch the show are uh, yeah pretty much starting up or or in the beginning of the of their uh, entrepreneurial path. Um, yeah, what advice would you give them? Uh, because uh, in the beginning, it was also, yeah, not you by yourself, but there were not that many people. Is it an advisory board or is it people around you? I think one of the many things I did wrong is um, working too hard. Uh, I worked seven by seven uh, uh, for many years. Um, and I made the mistake that I wanted to, to do everything by myself. Um, and I learned through the years that I'm not so smart, but when we onboard people that are on their domains much smarter as I am, our growth uh, keeps, faster, uh, keeps, yeah. fast, keeps, keeps on going faster and so on. And and, and it's on, on every domain, eh? not, not only technology, uh, creative marketing and, and strategy and so on, but also on the financial side, on the HR side, on the legal side. Uh, on the purchase side, all that that kind of yeah back office aspects are, are very important to to have in place, and and those are the tasks that you keep on doing uh, as a founder by yourself eh, because yeah, it's yeah. cheaper and it's not uh, no, no overhead please in the company and so on. But if if you have those things in place, you can grow very very uh, very good on on a quali qualitative uh, way. So you're actually saying you shouldn't have worked that hard all yes. these years. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, I, I don't want to say that I didn't party and, and, <laughs> and so on, but but yeah, I, I worked pretty okay. hard. Yeah, okay, can believe that. Um, okay, yeah, talking more about people, um, uh, we all we already discussed that you guys are 360, 360 people. Um, but I, I hear around me, I hear people talking all the time about the war for talent and how hard it is and how hard it is to find or, or even hire talent. Um, what What's your stake on that? Because uh, you guys, you hire a lot of people, you acquire a lot of people. How do you test these people, for example? Yeah. Um, by testing, you mean how do we uh, pick the right colleagues uh, in yeah in, let's uh, uh, let's say you open a job for a full stack marketer uh, probably the inflow is already quite high because everyone knows intracto um, yeah how do you take it fr from from the application process to actually hiring someone uh, because yeah in, in marketing uh, people are, are <laughs> always talking and that's sometimes the problem uh, but how do you test these skills or um, we have good conversation a good cup of coffee, a good old-fashioned conversation. 
where we talk not only about the expertise and, and, and uh, the, the career and so on, but really talk in depth about the person, about the culture he is looking for in a company, because we have a, a certain culture uh, and, and, and you have to really fit in in the culture and the expertise, well, we, we, we think the, the resume is fine and, 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 and it will be fine, but we, we are uh, very hard focused on, on the person's uh, values yeah, yeah, and person's interest values. Six. And the match with the yeah. company values, yes. yeah. Okay, um, yeah, going further on that, um, yeah, you hired a lot of marketers o over the last years. How do you look at uh, education within marketing in Belgium and even the Netherlands? Do you think there is proper education uh, to prepare people uh, to work in an mm. agency, for example? Well, uh, I think a good marketeer, a good, a good team member in, in our agency uh, needs to learn on a constantly basis. Um, yes, some, some basic uh, knowledge is, 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 is good uh, when they come from high school or in university and so on. But uh, we are just focused on on the the, the drive of the person uh, itself, and and we try to to yeah develop the talent by ourselves, because the market evolves, our needs and our wishes, our level of expertise we, we demand uh, is is maybe higher than 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 average, and we are just focusing on on training our own colleagues, training, okay. training, training. So constantly. you have something like an internal academy then, or More. Uh, uh, we've got master classes, we've got events, we've got in internal review systems, we've got a lot of things. Uh, we've got a budget for everyone to go to uh, events and, and seminars and conferences and, and so on. We try to stimulate uh, those those kind of events also, because we want to have our talent out there. To talk to uh, so they can talk with other talent and and they can pick new ideas and bring it back into the company we're very very high, highly focused on that so okay great uh, sounds good um <clears throat> also uh, we mentioned the war for talent um looking at the retention of your uh, marketers um i know intracto has an inter an in-house uh, cook and uh, you mentioned uh, maybe a hairdresser will uh, will join the company <laughs> soon so these are all like very nice perks but uh next to that what 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 makes the success because the marketers i know they've been working for intracto for several years which is like very odd uh, these days uh, within marketing. Um, and also people tend to go to the freelance uh, uh, status quite uh, soon. So what's your stake yeah. on that? Well, um, it's not that hard, I think. Um, first of all, we are focusing on, on, the, on the talent. Uh, every young potential uh, wants to develop its talent. And, and that, that's the first step. And that's why we are very focused on the masterclasses, the events, the, the budgets for the seminars and, and so on. Just talent development. And, and when, we, when you're focusing on the development of the talent uh, of, of every team member, they like it. They will stay. The second uh, point is every team member needs to feel what his added value in the agency is. Uh, every team member wants to be acknowledged for everything he does for the company and wants to feel what his added value is. And I think it's very important to have a focus on complementing uh, on, on one hand and uh, on the other hand also letting them feel that they add value for sure and that they're building together with us the whole company. It's, the company isn't built by the management. The company is built by every individual in the company, and they have to feel it that way. That, that those are, are uh, one and, and step number two. And, and step number three is, besides uh, uh, a good wage, we are focusing on um, delivering added value from a company to uh, every colleague by taking care of them, by providing a meal, by providing their iron services, by maybe providing uh, in the next step baby daycare in our campus, uh, by maybe a hairdresser or a fitness and so on. We, we all uh, always try to, to put something extra in there um, because I uh, already mentioned that we have to evolve uh, constantly. Uh, we yeah. can't be the same company for six months, uh, for example. And those kind of extra services, we see it, it as, as an obli obligation we have uh, for the colleagues that we also as a company constantly evolve in the added value we provide to them. Okay, 
clear. Um, okay, that's a very nice answer. I'm uh, already thinking about all the clothes I'm going to bring to Intracto <laughs> for uh, not doing my ironing myself anymore. So that's a, that's a good one. Um, oh, is this a job interview? <laughs> uh, do we have to switch roles? No, uh, no, 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 of course well, not. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, but um, t taking closer look to, to Intracto and, and yeah, the success, uh, because I think we can conclude that it's very successful. Um, how did you guys market Intracto initially and today? Uh, because today I think you guys probably are, um, yeah, you have salespeople and, and, and that kind of roles. But initially, um, was Intracto always sales driven or were you also marketing driven? Um, well, I think we are not neither of them. Uh, we are not a sales company. Uh, we've not. We are not a marketing company. But yeah, we we are, we are driven by the natural initiatives people take. We people don't have. Sharing, uh, we yeah. don't have uh, a very big sales team. Uh, we have uh, only four or five people uh, who do business development and sales in the organization. Okay. Which is, which is pretty For small, 360 eh? people, very, very that's small, very small. Eh? Yeah. Um, uh, we don't have a dedicated marketing team for our own marketing. Uh, everything we do on the marketing side are mainly initiatives by, by people in the company. Uh, writing a blog, writing a newsletter, uh, giving ideas for our, our newsletter, writing some new articles, writing an, a, a newspaper and, and pushing, it, uh, pushing it online. Those are mainly initiatives everyone in the company takes. And, okay. And we like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. It, I think it uh, translates the company values uh, in a very uh, good way to uh, yeah to the messages you guys spread, so I like that one. Um, okay, and then you mentioned yeah you guys are not uh, standing on a on a stage in an award show. Yeah, I like that one because I immediately imagine some other agencies <laughs> who do that. Yeah. Um, but how do you how, how do you look at that kind of agencies without uh, dropping names, but like the big ones who win a lot of awards because of creativity? What's your stake on their future? Because, w yeah, you know where I'm going with this question. Um, how do you look at that? I, I think standing on a stage is also a pretty good strategy. Eh? Um, getting awards is, is just very nice recognition for the team as well. So it's positive, I think. Eh? Uh, let's be clear on that one. It's, it's very positive, but it's, it's not in our nature. Um, most of the awards are focusing also on the creative ID, and I don't think creative creativity is, is, is very good and you need to stimulate it, but it's not the differentiator in the, in the future. Um, but first, it's not in our nature to, to uh, try to win awards, to standing on the stage and so on. And when it's not in the nature, I don't think you have to do it. Our focus is on uh, the operational side of the business and very working very hard in the company. Um, and yeah, pushing, uh, stimulating uh, our colleagues to go to the market themselves and, and, and create their own thought leadership in their domain and not focusing on, on us and as, yeah. as management to go on the stage. We, we like to, to put our, our colleagues in, into the spotlights and not, uh, not ourselves. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I like your answer, but I'm gonna rephrase my question um, because you know where <laughs> I want to go. Um, <laughs> How do you see the future or, or even do you still that the traditional, the more traditional agencies will still exist within 10 years? Um, because, for example, if I compare it to Intracto, the more traditional agencies, yeah, they, they create stuff and it's a lot about creativity, but it's not measurable at all. I think what you guys do with marketing automation, building stuff, it's very tangible and it's, yeah, you can almost see the exact outcome of the work you deliver. And yeah, the, the companies that pay you know, know what the ROI is. So what's your, uh, yeah. what's your thought on that? I think you need both competences. You need our competences, I think, uh, as, as, as a driver of execution and, and measurable uh, results indeed. But you, you also need the strategic and the creative services. I think the, the, the most ideal uh, situation is when you can combine a strategic creative agency with a very performance technology driven, driven agency as, as us, uh, as we are, sorry. Um, I think when you put those two together, you've got some magic. Uh, I hear another acquisition coming. Um, anything you can tell us about that? Uh, well, we're, we're constantly looking at the market and, and, and talking to, to colleagues and so on. So I don't think um, there will be no news at all uh, in the near future. But um, when the time is, uh, is right, uh, I will talk about it. Okay. 
Thanks. Um, we're almost at the end of our conversation, so I wanted to ask you five more very short questions. Okay. You can answer very, uh, yeah, briefly on these questions, and uh, I just want your thoughts on something. So okay. just shout the first <laughs> thing that curious. comes to mind. Okay. Um, what is your favorite brand? Tesla. Okay. You drive one. Yes. Okay. Um, who's your favorite marketer? I really don't have a favorite marketer. I think uh, my favorite entrepreneur, for example, for in Belgium is Jonas Danes. Uh, I really look up uh, on him, um, but on in an international space, Elon Musk is pretty uh, amazing as well. I think. Okay, um, okay, thanks. What's your favorite marketing book? Uh, all the books of Stephen van Belleghem, of course. Okay, of yeah, course, those uh, are pretty good books. Yeah, Stephen I can, Belleghem uh, is, I can uh, imagine uh, <laughs> that was part of the <laughs> snack bites deal, probably this answer. <laughs> um, okay, what's your favorite marketing campaign of all time? Um, don't have one. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you have to pick one trend for the future of marketing, which would it be? You get bonus uh, points if you don't use uh, voice, uh, Everything voice will, will, or will, Alexa. Will go into voice. Yes, voice, voice, voice. No bonus points. Sorry? No bonus points. No bonus points. Okay. Me. Then I'd like to thank you uh, for being uh, the guest of the second Modern Marketing TV. And uh, I invite you guys to subscribe to the channel. Um, and uh, I see you next week. And uh, Peter, thanks again uh, for this nice uh, talk. My pleasure.